A warm welcome from my side. My name is Michael Hess. I'm with Samsung for more than 10 years and currently responsible for the business development division at VTech. In the name of VTech, I'm pleased to welcome you and appreciate that you want to learn more about the background of rotary programs. To handle gaseous or liquid media, there are numerous different valve types available on the market. Each of them has its own specific area where its abilities and advantages are utilized in the best possible form. Today, we will have a closer look at the rotary plug valve, a valve that is perfectly suited for control tasks in high maximum and low minimum flows. An additional advantage is the low susceptibility to dirt and solid particles within the medium. The invention of the rotary plug valve goes back to the 1970s. We don't know the background exactly, but what we know is the following. As already mentioned, every valve type has its pros and cons. The glow valve, for example, is well accepted for excellent control behavior, whereas butterfly and especially ball valves perform best in the area of high CV value. Rotary plug valves combine the best of both worlds excellent control behavior and, due to an outstanding rangeability, the ability not only to control high throughputs like ball and butterfly valves, but also smaller flows. The design of rotary plug valves seems pretty easy. As we only discuss the principle of this valve type, we exclude parts like bearings, connectors and others. If we do so, a rotary plug valve consists of four main parts. The first, of course, is the valve body. On the left side, you see a long pattern, respectively globe replacement length design. The flow passes from left to right. If the valve is closed like on the image, the incoming pressure is held by the circular sealing edge between plug and seat. Plug and seat are the parts two and three. The fourth one is the stem, which leads the torque from the actuator down to the plug. Since the plug is rotating instead of sliding up and down, sealing the stem to the environment is easier and has less wear and tear during long time operation. If you have a look at the smaller pictures on the top, you can figure out that there are no redirections within the flow path, like in a sliding stem globe valve. If the valve is fully open, the trim completely moves out of the flow. As VTEC design has split shaft, there are no obstructions inside the jet. This is one of the reasons why our valves have such low susceptibility to dirt and solid particles. Finally to mention that rotary plug valves by definition have a double eccentric design. But what does it mean exactly? Well, everybody knows a design without any eccentricity. The image on the left shows a classic low-cost butterfly valve. The rotation axis is right inside of the middle of the plate. The image in the middle shows a single eccentric design, which represents a ball, respectively a segmented ball valve. Here, the axis of the ceiling edge is not aligned to the rotation axis anymore. If we have a look at the right image, we see that there is an additional eccentricity. The rotation axis, the red point, moves slightly out of the middle of the flow axis, which is highlighted in green. But what is the difference between these setups? Well, let's start on the left side. As the plate has no stop, attaching a seat for sealing is simply not possible. As an advantage, it is very cheap. On the other hand, it will suffer under a bad linkage rate. If we have a look at the middle, we can see a seat in front of the ball, respectively ball segment, which provides a tight shutoff. But imagine the ball to move. Then the ceiling will always be in contact all along the travel. The segmented ball valve is better, as the contact area will reduce with a wider opening. But remember, this is only a cutted view. So on top and below the level we see here, there is still a wide contact surface. Hence, the leakage will be decreased significantly, but for the price of high friction. This comes along with hysteresis and the non-optimal control behavior. Now, let's move to the right side, 
with a double eccentricity. This allows the plug to have only contact in the fully closed position. If we move only for a tiny angle, the seat is no longer in touch. This leads to good leakage rates in combination with an outstanding controllability, even for the smallest angles. Let me sum up what we learned during the last slides. There are three major advantages of rotary plug valves. The first one is the free flow path without any redirections, combined with the fact that the plug moves out of the jet in fully open position. Rotary plug valves have a two to three times higher flow coefficient compared to the standard globe valves. Thus, smaller sizes and smaller actuators can be utilized for identical process conditions, leading to a significant price reduction. This physical background also leads to an extreme low susceptibility to dirt and particles. The second advantage is the fact that due to the double eccentricity, there is no friction on the seat during the plug's travel. So rotary plug valves have an excellent control behavior and a superior rangeability. Hence, they are first choice if very high and very low flows have to be controlled with only one device. Finally, the rotating motion causes less wear and tear on the packing, leading to an improved long-term tightness. As the plug doesn't have to close versus the full pressure, like in a globe valve, but simply turns away, necessary actuators are less powerful, more cost-effective, and have a more compact design compared to actuators for sliding stand valves. We are at the end of this webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about the advantages of rotary plug valves, especially as an alternative for globe control valves, we recommend to listen to the webinar comparison of different valve types. Thank you for listening.